the last family in North America who should be holding themselves up as a standard for moral behavior and purity and goodness and godliness is my family. I would, I would be backing around the dining room table with him with the mattock up in a, he had it held like this and he was coming after me and he would smack me in the arm somewhere and I'm protecting myself and he's just screaming and his face is literally this mottled red and, and then he's got that mattock pressed up against my neck holding me in position and screaming right in my face and then just stopping for a minute and then he'd go these families that I know who have have been raised and have grown in a, in a, in a an environment where their their parents and their siblings just love each other and they support each other that just is not the world that I grew up in or that I have ever experienced so night guys The moral thing I should wish to say, I should say love is wise and hatred is foolish. Imagine a paradigm shift in parenting where we let go of the idea we have the right to impose our limitations on our children. A new way of thinking that we have a sacred duty to minimize the harm we saddle our little ones with as they go out into the world. Mark and I have had a challenging life together. He took me in after I left. There's not a perfect relationship. I don't know if there is such a thing, but it is probably one of the most important and valuable relationships I've had in my life. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Good, how you doing? But it's all wrapped up in that crazy shit. Mark was Nate's everything. Nate went through a lot of trouble through those years. He went through his drug addictions, his alcoholism, and Mark was there. Mark helped him, Mark guided him. Everything you've known, you leave behind, and you only have each other. <laughs> this whole big issue of extended family or family members who have left mm -hmm. has been a kind of a scary, I don't want to mess with it, I don't, I know. because I don't know how to deal with it. I'll get stuck because like this whole thing with our nieces and nephews, there is, there is a desire, but there's all of the stuff that's in the way, the, the yeah. beliefs that they came away from that place with about who I am, who you are, First of all, I know what they say about me. I know that the church talks about me. I know that I'm held up as exhibit A in that church as far as the heathen and the person who strays from God's word. And it is soul-sucking, life-debilitating message when I embrace it. That's what scares me about reaching out to my niece and nephew, that I'm gonna sit in front of one of them one day and they're gonna spout that out at me and it's gonna destroy me. But you and I both know from our experiences that, that every one of those people, every one of them is going to have to go through what we went through. It's, it's not possible for them not to. I would say that they need to understand at a visceral level, in the core of their being, without any judgment about why, but they need to understand that they were lied to, that the world is not what they were told it is. What's going on, lad? <laughs>